Wheel, telescope, steam engine, nuclear power, telephone, television, the internet are all just some of the great inventions of humankind. For as long as we have existed, humans have invented, and this has made us conquer the world and occupy every corner of it. Innovation has gone from providing warmth to our ancestors on a cold night to building reusable rockets. But what if we get to a point where innovation enables us to change our own species genetically? What if technology enables us to change the course of evolution for ourselves and our planet? Well, we need not imagine developing this technology because we have already discovered it and it's called gene editing. Yes, we now have a technology that allows us to reprogram ourselves and our planet similar to programming a software or an operating system. But the question is how safe are we with this technology? CRISPR gene editing. This is the gene editing technology that won the Nobel Prize last year. Shares are soaring today after announcing positive data from gene editing treatment called CRISPR. This is the first time that CRISPR has been used. We, they've used CRISPR to do things like cure sickle cell. How big of a breakthrough is this? Before discussing modern methods of gene editing, we shouldn't forget that we have been artificially modifying animal and plant genes through selective breeding for thousands of years. Selective breeding involves choosing two parent animals or plants with unique and beneficial traits to produce an offspring that carries both the beneficial traits of its parents. Most of the food we consume today, including wheat, corn, banana, eggplant, watermelon, have all been genetically modified over thousands of years and hundreds of generations. Domesticated animals are no exception. We have genetically modified cows to produce more milk, sheep to produce more wool, chickens to grow faster and much bigger. But the most unique and most extreme example of selective breeding are dogs. From one single breed that looked like wolves, we have bred hundreds of types of dogs, from giants like Rottweiler to miniature breeds like Chihuahua. But despite everything it has done for us, let's not forget that selective breeding takes years if not decades and many generations to perfect. And like many old tools, it's very time consuming and ineffective. After we discovered DNA in the 1860s, we finally understood what made life on Earth so diverse. We understood why, despite being made up of the same materials, trees are unique to mammals or reptiles. As it turns out, much like our programmed machines, we too are programmed and the code for this program is hidden away in a compound called DNA. To understand how complex and delicate this code is, all we need to know is that there is only a 2% difference in our DNA compared to chimps. Once we understood DNA, it didn't take long for scientists to start research on a new way of genetically modifying animals and plants. We are now in a position to produce chemicals like insulin in labs, where before, this had to be done by harvesting animal organs. We have genetically modified fruits and vegetables with longer shelf life, and fish that glow in the dark. We did all this by simply inserting snippets of DNA into a bacteria or cells of plants or animals. As impressive as all this is, even this method of gene editing was not very efficient. It was costly as experiments required special labs and insane funding. And not just this, failed experiments led to undesirable mutations, and lack of precision led to mistakes. The real-world applications of this method was far too expensive for everyone to afford. So what could replace this technology? In 2012, the gene editing technology changed almost immediately. Experiments that required millions of dollars in special expertise could now be performed by anyone with the basic equipment in a makeshift lab. Very similar to how anyone with a decent personal computer can learn coding and create softwares. And the technology that made this possible is called CRISPR. It's hard to explain how powerful of a tool CRISPR is. But to understand why this technology is so important and revolutionary, we need to look at the oldest ongoing war on our planet. You see, bacteria and a type of virus called phages have been at a constant war. Phages attack bacteria and insert their own genetic code inside them. Most of the time, bacteria's defenses are rendered useless and are used by the phages to make copies of themselves. But sometimes, bacteria win. When this happens, bacteria stores a part of the virus's DNA to help detect and fight off future attacks. The protein that helps detect this attack is called Cas9. Since Cas9 is extremely precise in identifying targeted DNA strands, we can use this precision to better target and edit DNA. If the old method of gene editing was like shooting in the dark, 
Cas9 is like a precision guided missile. It almost always finds its target. It is because of this precision CRISPR reduces the cost and time of experiments but increases the effectiveness of gene editing. Calling CRISPR a powerful technology is an understatement. With time for research and development of technology, we can cure incurable diseases like HIV and cancer. Not just that, we'll be in a position to cure genetic diseases like Huntington's disease, sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis and others. I'm not exaggerating when I say that in the coming years, CRISPR could help us cure all our diseases and disorders. But that's not all. Since CRISPR can be used to edit the genetic code of all living organisms including bacteria, trees, insects, animals and even humans, the power that comes with it is tremendous. We can grow crops that don't require rain to grow or plants that aren't affected by insects. In Africa, genetically modified sterile male mosquitoes have been released to combat malaria and prevent the death of thousands of children. If this experiment succeeds, then coupled with improving technologies, diseases spreading insects and parasites can be completely eradicated. And with many countries facing problems with invasive species, this method of eradication seems to be a better option compared to poisons and traps. So why are we not using this tool to combat all these problems? Why is there so much doubt and skepticism about this technology? Just because CRISPR can cure diseases that have plagued humankind, it doesn't mean the technology will be used for that purpose only. Remember, gene editing changes us on a fundamental and irreversible level. What if this technology is used to create babies that are genetically modified prior to their birth? What if the parents get to choose the baby's eye color, intelligence, height, hair color, or in extreme cases, gender. This robs the baby of the independence to choose. And the problem doesn't end there. Decisions like this will result in artificially altering our gene pool forever. We need to understand that altering genes is not a reversible process. Once it's done, there's no turning back. Another problem is regulation. With gene editing becoming cheaper by the day, more individuals get access to this technology. As this powerful tool becomes accessible to everyone, it becomes harder for governing bodies to retain any meaningful control over the effects of this tool. This is not to say that the tool shouldn't be available to all or that it should belong to a powerful few, but in the wrong hands, gene editing could pose serious danger. All it takes is for one wrong experiment. This could disrupt ecosystems and cause widespread losses. So after all this, you may be wondering if CRISPR is life-saving technology or if it's something that will lead us to dystopia. Well, that can only be answered with time. But it is obvious that the world powers and organizations should draw a line that no one should cross. As humans, we know what is right and what is wrong. We have a strong sense of morality. There is no doubt that this technology will be used for solving some of the most pressing problems including curing diseases, growing better crops, correcting genetic defects, controlling pests, etc. Our scientific communities will use this technology for greater good. But mistakes do happen and mistakes made by CRISPR will almost always be irreversible. But not exploring a technology just because it's powerful is foolish. On the brighter side, we know that overall, technologies like the internet and nuclear energy have done more good to us than bad. So what's to say that CRISPR won't do the same? Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this content helped you, please do share it and consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon if you don't want to miss my upcoming videos. I'll see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.